This I will read. Service to humanity is a service to God. When the word God is included in this or in humanity, it is in the nature form that the creator is all the time after love, after human care, after, you know, upholding and respecting the human race and generally the entire universe. So once in a while, it is always good to get ourselves to that point. And I mean, you hear this every other time. What is this that you're doing to benefit the society? You go for an interview, you say, this is what I've done, this is what I've qualified to do. But the question then will always come, how then is what you're doing benefiting the society that generally is service to humanity and so today we have this incredible story of one bishop dagana muniri who's the executive director goa international goa is a glory outreach assemblies international that you know is an incredible story that speaks of an individual who's dedicated his life to making the best of life for other people who thought they had lost it all and so we'll be delving get, uh, deep into understanding just what happens when someone decides to take that angle and what it is that his organization does and of what benefit has it been to the people good to have you bishop thank you so much thank you so much for your time i've been following up on what it is that you do and i think it's an incredible job thank but you. then i feel like you know the world out there should get to know this mm -hmm. and even as they get to know this we need to see the genuineness that comes along with this because many a times as individuals as a people we tend to meet different people yeah. who purport to have a great faith say the politicians or have the interests of people at heart yeah. but in most cases it is contrary yeah. and you find that we end up being disappointed and sometimes people have co uh, questioned whether indeed humanity yeah. does exist mm -hmm. good to have you thank you so much for having me mm -hmm. so what does goa international do even before we come to your story thank you so much uh goa international stands as you have correctly said glory outreach assembly yes this is uh it's an organization that i personally started in uh, 1991 mm -hmm. may so we have just begun our 30th anniversary wow this month mm -hmm. And uh, I started this when I was a teacher at Karima Girls High School in Yandarwa. Right. Uh, I was teaching uh, the girls in the national school there in Kinango, Yandarwa. And I was serving within the, my capacity as a teacher. Right. And while serving as a teacher, I was uh, still interacting with the community and wanting to impact the community. Mm -hmm. uh, with the time, I realized that... Uh, the, the, the changes or the impact that I had, read, I had brought about within the school could continue without me. Being but a I, teacher? Yes. Oh, why not? And, uh, okay. mm -hmm. and uh, because there are many more who could do what I was doing. All right. And I had, of course, raised, uh, raised the disciples to do the Christian part. Okay. And the Teacher Service Commission was still employing people. So that part could go continue mm -hmm. without me. So I focused more on the community. And uh, I, I, I just wanted to see that change in the community. Mm -hmm. Of course, when I was uh, going out to the community, initially I thought I was only concerned with the community around the school. Right. Because sometimes we think of only the area where we can, we can see. Mm -hmm. But as a person who, who believes in God and prays, God continued to guide me into a bigger and bigger vision. Mm -hmm. so, so, so I ended up starting a, a ministry that focuses on, on four areas. One of those is, uh, is uh, taking the gospel, particularly to the unleashed people, where they have never heard of it, mm -hmm. where we, we go and take the gospel through building the bridges. If they have no water, we drill the boreholes. If they have no education, we build the schools. Uh, if they have, no, uh, they have never had opportunity to do adult literacy, we do adult literacy. Mm -hmm. uh, hospitals, I mean, then, uh, so that is the church part. Of course, we have to plant the churches in areas that already have other churches, so that they could become the, the springboard and the bridge by which we connect those who have and those who don't. Mm -hmm. because, uh, let's uh, not take it very fast. Okay, yeah? okay. And uh, go back a bit. I go back. And you know, when we're talking about this, we think money, we think resources, we think availability, we think time, and mm -hmm. we think, you know, support and all that. Yes. And then one one would want to argue, and you know, sometimes people question this a lot, because mm -hmm. most of the people will tell you we are in that line of, you know, philanthropy in the humanitarian side, but we always tend to question how does it start? I mean, you cannot tell me that, yes, with the, with the benefits that 
you gathered after saying that you're now uh, leaving the teaching profession, you could be able to say that this is working. Yes, you say there is that grace that has been incorporated. But just what got you out of this space of Nyandarwa to give you the stamina to go further and further? And just how far did this go? Uh, yeah, that's a great question. You see, when I, uh, the, the motivation uh, within me yes. is to serve humanity, and that's our subject today. Right. And that is what drove me out of the teaching profession because I had opportunities to serve the girls in the school. Mm -hmm. uh, the most I could do is uh, when their parents come, yes. it is probably girls and the parents, but that is the largest population that probably I could reach. Mm -hmm. and, um, and I always think, my thinking process is always along the lines of sustainability. Yeah. So when I'm serving the school, I was still asking myself, if I was not going to be here, who would this continue? And how would it continue? Mm. So I focus more on building teams, uh, raising the disciples, in, investing in people. And um, I started teaching in that school in 1st of uh, April, 1988. Wow. And by, by 90, I already felt that uh, I had done I done. I two years people. only. <laughs> yes, it is it, my because my focus when I get into a community. I, I believe in people investment. I yeah. believe in equipping people. Okay. I believe that people are the best resource of every organization. And speaking before you even could expound on that, you know, one would want to ask. Uh, sometimes it's not always easy to make these bold decisions, yeah, because that would be looked at as a bold decision. When we're talking about service to humanity and service mm -hmm. to people, survival also comes in. Mm -hmm. And so here you are. You're leaving a, a well-paying job. I mean, in most cases, people looked at, you know, the teaching profession as everything that every other person would want to land into. And two years down the line, you decide otherwise. In life, we don't always get that bold feel that we can do and proceed to do what it is that we term good for ourselves. How did that happen? What really was this driving force? It is a process. Yes. And it did not, did not happen within two years. It only, it only worked in me through the two years. Mm. But I ended up uh, working until 1998, okay. which is 10 years. All right. But within the 10 years, I was serving within the Karima Girls High School, mm -hmm. and I was also serving within the community. All right. And uh, when, when, when you want to serve the community, uh, there is always that, that uh, decision of balancing mm -hmm. between, between, what, between what you're doing. So I was balancing between the work in the school, which as you say was my pay, yeah. was my salary, yeah. and I had a family, and, and the call that I also feel outside, and within the balance, then within 10 years, uh, I had raised enough people who could continue within the work in the school, okay. and the work outside in the, in the village, a place called Donyanjeru in Kinangop, mm -hmm. had already started growing to other, to, to other areas. Yeah. So within, within the 10 years, I had already planted churches in, uh, in places called Bushi, Tigoni, uh, different places, Nyeri. And, uh, and now it, to, to divide myself into being effective was not, was not very easy. Yeah. But you ask a good question, how do you get to that point? It is a process, it's not easy. Um, as a human being, you want to be sure that, uh, that you, you will be able to meet your obligations right. as, uh, as, as a father. Is, uh, is also a, a minister of the gospel. You want to take care of your family, mm -hmm. so it is. It is. It is difficult, and it's not. Uh, it's not easy. But um, God uh, was speaking to me, and 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 throughout those ten years, those were moments of uh, of, of of listening to God, making the decisions, uh, praying about it, and and of course, as I make those decisions, there is that conviction from within that I want to serve humanity, mm -hmm. and uh, and that's 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 what is in my heart. So, so this particular point of uh, 1991, uh, it was so clear that God wanted me to, to, to have a bigger vision than, we, than just the Karima Girls High School mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and create a framework through which I would serve humanity, uh, a legal framework, a social framework, a, a framework that I would work with other teams. That is how Glory Outreach Assembly came into being okay. to become that framework. And, uh, and as we went by, uh, God made it very clear that uh, there were four areas that I was to make an impact in the service of humanity. Mm -hmm. As a human being, I wanted to do everything. Uh, I am that kind of person who, who don't want to see a problem and not fix it. Okay. I, 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 I'm just, I'm just, that's just me, mm -hmm. uh, if I can do it. So, I, but, but as we went on, God went on narrowing down uh, to four areas. Mm -hmm. So, so I, I focus uh, on four areas, that is the church, 
the, the, the church, we call it church growth. Yeah. Church growth has to do with, uh, with all the things that goes on with the church. Mm -hmm. Then compassion, it's about the orphans and the, the, the children's homes and the schools. Uh, then the other one is leadership development for the sustainability again, uh, because you need to have uh, develop leaders if you are going to sustain an organization. Yeah. And the fourth one is peace building and conflict resolution. Mm. So I narrowed down to those four areas and became very strategic in my service to the community. Mm. And every team that I built, I built aloud around for those four areas. Mm -hmm. And of course, the teams that I built are based on, 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 on people's uh, understanding the vision of, yeah. of, of the impact that I want to do. And, uh, and, 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 and it has been, it has been, been, been quite a journey. A, oh, quite a journey, I must yeah. agree yes. as well. Yeah. I am not in it, yeah. but I can tell you I have been alive <coughs> to the fact of what has been happening in our own churches, in mm. our own spaces of uh, service, mm -hmm. and in spaces of where you want to go out there and yeah. serve humanity. And sometimes you could be having that drive, but then the reception is not always good. I'd love for you to tell us your experience in terms of the reception in the different areas you've toured, the different people you've met, the people who would be considered to be backward, the people who would be considered to be rigid, and here you are, you're coming with the doctrine, here you are, you're coming with, you know, the visions, the four visions that you have. Just mm -hmm. getting them to loosen up and welcome this. Mm -hmm. What is the experience? Uh, life is about overcoming obstacles if we are going to be successful yeah. on, on anything. And uh, when God gives you a vision like he gave to me for, for, for GOA, uh, I knew very well that there were obstacles. And these obstacles start from right from the point of right from within you. As you said earlier, you begin to ask yourself, okay, God wants me to reach these four areas of church, compassion, peace building, leadership, but uh, do I measure up to that? So you begin with mm -hmm. your own personal feeling of inadequacy, which you can work on as you develop yourself and build capacity. You move on to external forces like even people who are near you. Mm -hmm. uh, personally, I had teachers who are good friends of mine in mm -hmm. the school where I was teaching, who even uh, came to me to sit me down and say, is everything okay with you? <laughs> I would do the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> it's a look at the children, they're just young. You have just, and, and family you, would question that, yes, I'm going to believe. Yes, yeah? yes. The children are just starting the, the nursery school by then. And, okay. and, 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 uh, but, then but then when God speaks, He speaks. So there is that, um, there is that, uh, that obstacle that comes from friends, the, the people who are near you, the family. Parents, of course, would say, uh, we, we thought you, we, you, we educated you to come and help the family and help yourself. No. Now you are going to, to church whereby you need help. <laughs> Actually, I remember the teachers were so candid and so blunt with me. They mm -hmm. said, if you leave this job, do not expect to be bringing cards to us to, to fundraise for the you, church. for your own children and for your own church. Yes. And I said, that's fine. That's good. That's a good challenge. But, uh, but I, 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 I trusted God and I believed in God. But the obstacles have always been there, right. as you said. Mm -hmm. So they are all over the place. There are obstacles that you meet when you go to, uh, to take, like, take the gospel to the Trukana, where yes. we are doing a lot of work mm -hmm. uh, to go to a different culture and introduce, introduce the new message there. Mm -hmm. um, but I think one of the greatest challenges is the challenge of the resources. Because uh, to be able to serve humanity, uh, you need to, you need to, to really uh, have the resources mm -hmm. to be able and, to And I that. mean, that would be my first question because most of the time we ask, where mm -hmm. does this guy get all these resources to go and carry this huge load from Nyandarwa, from wherever, all mm -hmm. the way to Turkana? Mm -hmm. And you know, when you go to Turkana, most mm -hmm. of the times you're told, if these people have to listen to you, and not just Turkana, but across the board, yeah, you have to come with incentives, you have to come with goodies, you have to come with, you know, reason tangible reason to get them coming to listen to you this is where now this is where now god comes in okay because when god gives you the vision he gives you the provision for okay. it and uh, and there is uh, when, when there's no vision without provision probably the timing the timing the resources might delay you might have the vision earlier and take long before you get the provision for mm -hmm. it and um and there is no time that you'll ever feel that you have enough financial resources for, for the vision you have, yeah. or enough uh, people to do what you want to do. You always feel, I wish I had more teams to do this. There's no time you'll ever feel you have enough, enough time 
to do everything you want to do. Yeah. So those three resources are just a question of stewardship. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, uh, when I pray and trust God to give me the resources, I also move out and and do the, the, the fundraising mm -hmm. for the sake of, uh, of the vision. And that is one of my greatest, uh, my, my greatest uh, jobs in terms of uh, spending my time. Mm -hmm. I go talk to the people, I go talk to different people, I, sh I cast the vision. When I cast the vision, there is someone who would really want to support an orphan, but they don't know how, they don't have the time, but they have the, the money they can, they can take care of that orphan. Yes. So we become partners. There is someone who would really want to go to Trukana, but they somehow they, they, they don't feel they, are, they can get there. So mm -hmm. they tell, they, they say, okay, can, can, we, can we go with you? You go because you, you are able to go physically and you can be there. Yeah. But uh, we can go with you through financial resources. So, so it is a question of uh, the, the part of the resources is, uh, is building partnerships, mm -hmm. building partnerships with people who have shared vision. Because service to humanity it is something that is uh, in every human being. Okay. Because we are created by a God who loves us. And we are all human beings. Uh -huh. Inside every human being, the there, is, there, is, there is service to humanity. The problem that we have is how we develop that. The problem how we, that we have is how in the environment in which we grow. Mm -hmm. The problem we have is, uh, is, is, is the exposure that we get to it and how we, how we, 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 we feel overwhelmed by whatever, whatever service is. Mm -hmm. so, so when I cast the vision, there will always be that person who will say, either they need, they need me to serve them or they will need to partner with me to serve to others. Serve others. Those two people will always be there. Okay. After every conversation, there will be always be somebody saying, oh, I have this child who has no parents. Could you take the child? Wow. And those are the majority. Mm -hmm. And they need to be served. Yes. Of course, I don't take all of them because I don't have room for everyone. Mm -hmm. But there will always be that person who is saying, oh, okay, uh, I may not take a child myself, but is there any way I can help? I can help? Mm -hmm. so, so because we are naturally human beings, that's why we are human, created by a God who, who loves us and who has brought humanity in us so that we may serve others. And if it were not for the conflict between the evil and the good in the society, yeah. this world would be a better place for everyone. Mm -hmm. And that is why it is so important that we are having this conversation because I strongly believe that there should be more people serving humanity. Mm -hmm. and, and sometimes the challenges and the fear of the unknown. Mm -hmm. So like God will say, go ye to a land that I will show thee. Mm -hmm. And so you're going, uh, you probably do not know where to start. You are meeting people from different cultures. Your culture and theirs differ. They speak a different language. But you still need to go and serve these people. You still need to go and speak to these people. You still need to go out there and make sense. That is where our faith people. comes in. Yes. That's where faith comes in. In 1991, uh, God spoke to me when I was teaching in a very clear and audible way and said, go make disciples of all nations. Mm -hmm. Very clearly from a scripture in Matthew 28, 19 and 20. Go make disciples of all nations. How? Teach them, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son and the Holy Spirit. And, 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 and I went back to the question that you asked me earlier. I said, God, I don't even have a passport. How do, do I go to the nations? Okay. The, that feeling of inadequacy and that you don't measure up in the service. Mm -hmm. And I said, uh, how do I do this? How do I do this and that? Mm -hmm. and, um, and human beings feel that way all the time. But the moment you respond by faith and say, here I am. I am lady. I'm willing to obey. And then, then, then God begins to help you to move to move forward mm -hmm. uh, like Trukana uh, for example it was in a conference that we did uh, right here in Nairobi in May and we said there are people in this country who are not reached with the gospel yet here in Nairobi the, the, the churches are as close as a stone throw away mm -hmm. and uh, the problem we were having here when we were having that 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 conversation is that we could not even hear each other clearly from the church because on this side there's one, mm -hmm. on this side there's Sometimes another. you sit at home and you're able to listen to the <laughs> sermon. You really do not have to get to the church building. Yes, yes. Sometimes people would actually get lost from the stairs. Yes. Or they wanted to come to this, but they went they to the went other to a one. Different. So, so we said, Lily, what is, what is, what is this all about? Mm -hmm. And, and uh, in, in, in those conversations and meetings we said, there are people in this country, they are human beings, 
They need the same gospel. They are Kenyans. The God also loves them. He died for them like he died for all of us. And that's how he decided. We're going to do something among the Trukanas. Okay. And we just went by faith, not knowing anybody there. Mm -hmm. I can imagine the excitement. So yes. This is a new thing. Uh, sometimes we just read in uh, history books. Mm -hmm. So the white man came, they were carrying this on this other side, they were carrying a Bible on this other side. We probably were not privy to that experience. But these people are experiencing this. What is this one, you know, incredible thing that happened uh, that probably you looked at as a turning point and you know it probably gave you hope that you can keep pushing this gospel or you can keep pushing this great work first these people first when 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 we got that challenge of how we are living here and and having conflicts within churches and, and noise yes and decided that we were we gonna we started to start with the nearest we thought Samburu Maral is near mm -hmm. so we went to Maral first and the Maral people looked at us and said uh, what is this Jesus you are talking about? Wow. And it is in this country. Here we are so? fighting, here we are competing, but there they, ask, well, they were asking us, which is this Jesus you are talking about? They say, they took, they told us, come, we show you. They took us to where <laughs> the first <laughs> president had been, uh, uh, the Kapinguria place where mm -hmm. they had been taken, yes. and said, uh, could this be the person oh, you are talking no. about who fought for us? Are you serious? Yes, in this country, and it is not long ago, it is 2003. He is in 2003. Okay. If he is that important, why have we heard of this one who was jailed here for us and not him? Okay. And, and those, those are serious conversations. And from 2003, as we speak today, in that uh, area of Saburu, in every village, over 25 churches there for GOA are growing okay. with us with a self-supporting self-governing and they are they are taking the gospel among themselves. Mm -hmm. So we got so inspired. Uh, and challenged at the same time. When somebody says they know the first president but they don't know Jesus, that, that was, that Lily, Lily was, was a, a big challenge mm -hmm. to us when we know how much we are competing here. Then we came back and said, oh, that worked very well. And uh, why don't we go to Lodwa? Lodwa was a bit far. And we went to Lodwa. In those days, there was a lot of insecurity to travel. You had to reach to Kitare. Then you buy the, the Lily food because they, they're not welcome if you have no food. Then you take uh, policemen to administration police for, for security because there was a lot of, uh, there, was, there were there is the days of the shifters and, and the Pokoti and the Tukana fighting at a place called Kainuku, you could not pass there. Mm -hmm. So, and the road was so bad. So we went and reached there. And when we reached there, we started asking, uh, whom can we, can we work with here to just serve your people? Mm -hmm. And almost everyone we talked to directed us to one person. They said, we only know one person here, and he's called Missionary John. He's the one who serves us. He doesn't care who you are. He gives mm -hmm. us food. He preaches the gospel to us. So they directed us to him. And come to think of it, the, the Missionary John is, is, is today the, the member of parliament for Trukana Central oh, in nice. his second term. Okay. This is, <laughs> so he held us. He was so happy. He was, he was, he was just a local person by then. Mm -hmm. He said, oh, we've not seen many people who will help our people. So he took us to the village. And we went to a village 85 kilometers away from Rodwa. People are three quarters naked, probably the way they were born. Mm -hmm. They've never had the gospel, no clothes, never, never been to any school. Not anything nothing, from any religion. Nothing. And we asked them, what is it we can help you with? They said, if you can get us water so that our women and children do not have to go to the Trukana for water every day, we would really appreciate. Mm. If you can get a school so that our children can be like those ones of Kenya down there, wow. where they go to school, <laughs> then we would really appreciate. Okay. And if we can have some among you remain here to be teaching us this good word, that of course they were asking for church. Mm. So they were asking for school, water, and church. That was October 2004. As we speak, they have all those. We have over 30 churches there built and planted, more than 10 boreholes where people get the water, three uh, primary schools, including adult literacy, where an adult comes to you and tells you, I just don't want to know much about learning for anything, just to read the Bible. I just want to read the Bible. Okay. Just, just Because, I mean, it's the only book that I know. Probably. Yeah, just, yes. and, and, and if you hear that the motivation of an elderly man like me to go to class is to read the Bible, 
then 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 you 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 must you must do something about this right. so so um when 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 god gives you a vision and you obey it and you walk by faith because this is when our faith comes in when god tells you go you get you start going to earth Marari, you have no clue what is there you start going to lodua you have no clue what is there but god makes a way and uh and he he provides a way so today 30 years down the line it's a good story i i i, I could not uh, think of anything else to do other than serve humanity well bishop probably we're going to have you some other time to get to understand this because then i'd want to imagine the scramble that is in existence today well with different religions trying to speak their own you know trying to say that this is better than the other christianity is better than this and all that and i mean the very same ears are listening to this just how do did you ever get that kind of you know uh, a clash because you sit on the same space and all of you are seeking to get these people to understand what it is that you sell uh, that is one thing that we'd love to know at some point in time but uh, coming to the key things that you have mentioned church you, you probably have been very successful on that compassion maybe compassion you know, eight children's homes uh, caring for 400 orphans today wow that is incredible that is just something caring for one is a huge deal so yeah. what of when we're talking about uh, you know 400 and so leadership development mm -hmm. and peace building those are some of the things that we struggle with as the entire nation yes yes and that is why that's why that's why GOA is uh, is relevant mm -hmm. in meeting the needs that concerns us because when we talk of leadership uh, it is the biggest challenge that we have yes. because if we can resolve leadership problems then we, we might probably even resolve the economics mm. and uh, everything will rise or fall based on leadership. So we, we, we equip the leaders to spread the gospel because again, if, uh, if we just talk about uh, leadership without, without, without the gospel, there is a gap missing because it's just like the, just like the service that humanity we are talking about today. Um, unless the heart of a person is transformed by a certain experience, mm -hmm. It becomes difficult for that person to even see why they should be in, in concerned or even involved with the need of another person. Yeah. And that experience that transforms the heart of a person uh, is found in many religions, but in, the, in Christianity, it is the gospel. When we come into encounter with the Lord, with, the, with Jesus, and I'm glad you have asked me the question about other religions, mm -hmm. because on, uh, on the eve of Christmas 24th, we met at uh, the embassy of uh, Iran mm -hmm. with, uh, with the ambassador and, and the sheikh from Kibera and other places between Islam and Christianity. And, uh, and we had a conversation, long, long conversation. Okay. But the conversation is, is, is uh, ended up in that, of course, we might be different, but there are also many things that, uh, that, that unite us. Mm -hmm. And uh, like when we come to talk about humanity, I'm serving humanity, every religion upholds the aspect of serving humanity mm -hmm. and that is why it is it is it is not on the basis of which one or which which, which, uh -huh. which, uh, which other one okay yes All right. so i think um we would love to have that that conversation but leadership if leadership is addressed many many problems would be solved mm -hmm. even in our country like the conversations we, we are seeing around going around yeah is all is it's all about leadership right it's all about leadership and what can what, we do to get it right what we get to do, what we do to get it right is have and equip, equip the readers with values so that we have value-based, value-based leadership. Right. Now we are, the reason we are, we are focusing too much on the tribal and ethnicity and, and all those other factors, young, old and all that, is because we are not, we, do, we don't have value-based leadership. Mm -hmm. there, are no, there are no things that we would say these are the core that really brings us together. These mm -hmm. are the, the values that brings us together. And, um, and, and so every time we have to look for something to fill in that gap, because there's that gap of, of what, what will bring us together. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and we also need to have leadership that has a vision, a vision that people can clearly see and be spelled out to help us as Kenyans, not only when we are just about to go to election yeah. or something like that. Mm -hmm. so, so I believe very, very strongly, and peace and conflict, there's no way we can do our economics no, we can do our, our education or anything or even religion without we peace. We don't get it right. We, got, we have to get peace. That's okay. why it is important. All right. It's yeah. really important. This is one experience that you probably have had. 
that uh, you know got you laughing in most cases and I and I think we used to read in books uh, the experiences that uh, the people who brought uh, you know the word to us had this is a person you're giving the Bible has probably never gone through the Bible has do, doesn't even know how to read and I mean the first thing you want to 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 do is when you're going to preach this gospel you tell them this is the book and this is what will be guiding you I, I do not, I don't know, I don't know what the experiences were like, but sometimes even when you're giving the newspapers, after you're done with the newspapers, you know what most of the people would do with it. What is this outrageous experience that you probably have had as you go out there to spread the gospel? Uh, in 2004, the, when, I, when we went with the, with the, the, the gentleman I may say is, is the Honorable for Trukana Central today, Yes. that village, uh, I had carried small New Testament Trukana Bibles. Oh, yes. They had just come out. Uh -huh. And so I was excited that I'm taking the word to them. And uh, so when we started giving them out, I, I saw one elderly man very excited and looking like smiling. Okay. So I asked, he was my interpreter, I asked John, uh, what, why is he so happy? He's, ask him, <laughs> let him, let, 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 let's, let's hear why he's so happy to get the Bible. Okay. And the man looks at uh, him and says, because now I have enough papers to snuff tobacco for uh, one year. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and, no. and they are well organized. I just need to pluck okay. one at a time. <laughs> and, uh, and I said, wow. Okay. So I said, why would he think that way? Because that is his world. But it's true. You know, the, the, the people who sell jugu will mm -hmm. tell you that they're always out here, mm -hmm. you know, hunting for papers so at least they can. <laughs> and I'm saying this because I had a very close person who used to sell jugu. So most of the times, if they see such papers, mm -hmm. it's a smile to them because yeah. they're going to use that for Yeah, business. and after all, he, the person has never been to class, so he doesn't know how to read or write. Yes. So when they later on say, if you can start for us a, a, a class here so that we read the Bible, mm -hmm. it resonates with, with that experience. And, right. and then, <laughs> and that's why we do that. All right, so that's a good one. <laughs> and sadly, time is not really on our side. But I'm sure there are people who would love to get to you. Probably someone is watching here and they know that there's someone who would love to get help from you. Now that you talk of uh, you know hosting uh, lots of people or lots of children who are out there in need and everything. I know it's a work, it's, it's work in progress. It's a process that is ongoing like you say not everyone would qualify but maybe someone who's watching us today would qualify how do they get a hold of you how do they get to go out there and search for that gospel that you probably would preach to them and would quench their problems and thirst yes well, whoever would be interested in getting uh, uh, to me and contacting me I'm available I'm available I'm always at uh, not always, but most of the times mm -hmm. I am at uh, Kahawa Wendani. Okay. Uh, my office is at Kahawa Wendani, mm -hmm. uh, GOA. That's where our headquarter is. All right. Just at a place called Kwangeda, right there at Kahawa Wendani. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and most of the time I'm there. If I'm not there, there will be people. I have a team, a team of 13 people there who are usually there or in the field. Mm -hmm. we, we serve the Lord there. They, I'm also on all the... All this social, social media. Social media I would have asked you, yes. are you that old school? I, I mean, there's no. All of so, them. Any, if I Google today, if I'd you, be able to if get you, information. If you Google Bishop David Munyere Thagana, yeah. Bishop David Munyere Thagana, or um, Goa International, or Goa International, GOA, either, yes. a GOA mm -hmm. either way, you will find you find me in everything, all the way YouTube, uh, Facebook, everything, all, all those things. All right, yes. uh, uh, Bishop, I am really grateful for your time mm -hmm. and for the incredible work that you're doing mm -hmm. for humanity. And as I would say, it really requires a big heart. Some yeah. of us wish for the same, but just how to start is one thing that we keep wondering about. And, and even if you start, sometimes you just go halfway and you give up. So we are really grateful for that. And we're looking forward to have you some more, mm -hmm. even as we get to expand some more on spiritual nourishment and yeah. growth and also leadership in the country, because you realize that at the place where we are headed, it is very important that we get guidance from church, mm -hmm. we get guidance from the religious leaders. Yeah. And I think these are conversations that we should be having time and again. Yeah. It was really good having you this morning. And also for the feedback, thank you so much for sending us the feedback. It was good having you from the word go. And up until now, Bishop Dagana Munyiri, Executive Director, GOA International. It was good having you. And I'm looking forward to more like I have rightfully put it. And you back at home, thank you so much for that. You can always take advantage of some of these conversations because you do not know what it would mean for you come tomorrow. We wind up at that as we look forward to another beautiful morning tomorrow on Matters Entertainment and technically what it is that we'll be having in store for you. So watch out for that. See you again. Bye-bye.